do with relationships. I mean, you, you tend to think of somebody that you're spending a lot of time with, or you could talk about work relationships or family relationships. But when you're walking down the street, let's say you're going downtown Cincinnati, you know, and you pass by 80 people on the street, you know, most people don't think of those as relationships. <laughs> or you're going up the elevator, you know, to a to a business appointment that you think is really important. What the course does is it it pulls it back and throws it into it, and it says that every encounter is is a is a holy encounter, and that you're teaching your mind about yourself with every encounter. So he even gives examples where um, two kids may uh, um, walk home from school together and they may become friends. Or a child may run into an adult and the adult may not scold the child. Or, you know, he gives a couple examples and he says salvation has come. That it's the state of defenselessness. It's the state of love and peace. And, and it, takes a, it does take a, a work with the mind to kind of get it out of its mindset. Because it's like the mind thinks it knows what relationship is. Everyone you meet is a holy encounter, you know, and it's like, don't, not to get caught in that mindset of like Course in Miracles, whatever, speakers, workshop leaders, like you're kind of going from one place to the next and, and miss the journey. <laughs> it's kind of like saying the journey's right under your nose. Every place, every time you stop for gas, every rest area you stop at, every single encounter you have, everyone who passes you, you know, on the highway, or wherever you are, it's, it's an opportunity, you know, it's a, it's a golden opportunity. Back, back in the teacher's manual, in the levels of teaching, Jesus starts off by saying there aren't any levels of teaching. You know, he gives three, but he proceeds it by saying, you know, <laughs> that there really are no levels in God's plan. I had a nice experience of that, seeing Christ in every face when I flew down to Santa Fe recently. I was in, flew out of city airport in Detroit, which I'd never done before, and it, um, it was small, so it was comfortable in that respect, but some flights got clutched up a little bit, and um, I was worried that I would miss my connector, and that that our plans to see uh, Mikhail Brednikov in the evening would be blown. <laughs> Which they weren't. But so I, you know, I can't do a thing about it. So I, I'm sitting there thinking, I may as well see Christ in every faith in this place. And so I'm thinking, there's Jesus reading a newspaper. There's Jesus jumping rope. There was a little kid. You know, I'm looking at everybody and what they were doing. And say, there's Christ doing that, sleeping, smoking a pipe. And um, it, it just really calmed me down and took my mind off this, connection that I might not make. And then some woman came up to me and said, what time is it? And I told her the time. And she said, well, it's going to be an hour different when we get to Chicago, isn't it? And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> that had never crossed my mind until I, you know, and I really felt that was such a clear response from spirit. To yeah. One thing with these, this holy relationship thing, that's in an earlier lesson. I had an appointment at my attorney who was on the fourth fourth floor. And I was done and I was leaving. I came home and told by this that night. It's just ironic. But I got on the elevator and I pressed one. And the elevator started moving and my feet got confused. My legs got confused. Like I was going up and not down. And it takes a few seconds to recover from, especially not being in a presence of mind, so to speak. So anyway, I went up to the sixth floor and this lady got on and I looked at her and I said, you know, it's really, funny, her, her feelings are really odd things. Sometimes when you think you're going down, you're really going up. <laughs> and so the elevator started going down and it was, we only had to go down like five floors. But she started crying on the elevator and she got off and she said, boy, I hope you're right or something to that effect, you know. Oh and God. then it was the next day we read about this holy relationship thing and I thought, Wow, there's a 30 second one. And uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. since then, it's like when we're in fables or going to coffee, I look at people and, and they'll tell you they're fearful or they'll tell you they're joyous or whatever. Just that plans. You know, yeah. I think, yeah, this is pretty neat stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know one time I was traveling across country and I had to get to whatever the next town with motels in it. I'm there and I'm starting to travel. I said, what am I going to do? Oh, well, the cars were coming for me. Well, trying to figure out whether there's one person or two people in the car, so then I would say, I bless you, or I bless you, I bless you. <laughs> you know, depending on how many occupants in there, what car kept me busy, because they'd around the kids in the back of the wagon, I bless you, 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 and it goes by, and I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. And I just started trying to bless each occupant of each car, and I'm there, and the next thing I know, here's this sign, Best Western, something or other, I'm there, and I look. 
couldn't have traveled that far that fast that quick. <laughs> you know, just time just totally collapsed. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and naturally they had a room, and actually there was a nice restaurant, one of the best restaurants was right across the street. So, you know, it, it, but it was just interesting, just blessing, quote, strangers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you, you mentioned the word witness, you know, and it comes up, of course, so much. And every time I hear or read that word, it, it just, it's so profound to me that what I see is a witness to where I'm at, mm -hmm. yeah. to what's in my mind. Yeah.